you could, let's turn our Bibles to book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to look at verses 13 through 15. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. The title of the message is Dead Christians. Dead Christians. Dead Christians. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. Verse 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Brother Richard, can you pray for the message? and allow him to preach a convicting sermon unto us, Lord God, so that we may stray away from our temptations from this world, so that we, we may nail our flesh to the, to the cross, Amen. so that we may continually to walk spiritually on this world, and to continually to have the strength to share the gospel Amen. of what you did for us, Lord Jesus Christ, salvation by faith alone, glory be unto you, Lord God. God, I pray that you continue to comfort uh, the Shrive family, yes, please sir. be with them, Lord God. Uh, show them compassionate and love unto them, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, I pray for anybody that's here today that's listening or viewing on the, on the online ministry, that if they're not saved, Lord God, that they, that they come and get to know you as their Lord and Savior, yes, Jesus Christ. For your blood that you shed atones all of our yes, sins, yes. not of our own righteousness, yes, but Lord. righteousness by you, Lord God, yes. the great almighty Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you bless this day to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Keep us free from all the spiritual and all the devil's attacks. Keep them away from us and protect us, Lord God. Watch over us. Mm -hmm. And I pray of all, of all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Dead Christians. Dead Christians. Did you know that you know, many Christians nowadays act like dead people? What's the common thing about dead people? They don't do anything. They can't do anything. So if you're not doing anything for the Lord Jesus Christ right now, how are you different from a dead person? You know, we have cemeteries out there, right? People have gone to be with the Lord, and some people are burning in hell right now. One thing is that they can't do anything right now. You know, people have left legacy in many cases, People get motivated and challenged from those people. However, they cannot go out there and win a soul right now. They cannot go out there and preach the word. You know, or in some you know, cases, like rich men and Lazarus, like rich folks, they're dead. If they're burning in hell, they can't go back to their family and tell them to get saved, right? If that fire is hot. They can't do it. So common thing is that dead people can't do anything, accomplish anything, because they're dead. However, many Christians can be dead spiritually. You could be that person who is a Christian, but spiritually you're dead. Even though you have a new spirit living in you, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit lives within you. However, you as a Christian can be a dead Christian because you don't do anything for the Lord. You don't do anything when you get convicted by the Holy Ghost. And you become cowards, right? You become Christian that cowers from anything that is sound doctrine, anything that stands for the truth. Then who is like a biggest coward if you are a Christian? Right? Of course, if you deny Lord Jesus Christ, you're a coward. You know, what defines a great man, whether you're saved or not, is loyalty. You know, you know people who's loyal, they have a lot of friends somehow. 
right? Because people can trust that person. They're like, okay, you know what? You know, Johnny over there, you know, Jane over there, you know, I like to be their friends. Why? Because I know that they'll be loyal to me. They're not going to be out there gossiping about me, you know, putting me under the bus, right, and lying about me. And they have those, you know, characters. However, one thing about dead Christians is that, you know, you're a coward. You are a hypocrite. And you always deny Lord Jesus Christ when you have opportunity to stand for him. And one of the ways to stand for Lord Jesus Christ is by proclaiming his gospel. Right? Whenever you have opportunity, you confess him before man. And Lord gives that opportunity to every Christian here and who's listening. And when those opportunities come your way, are you going to be that alive Christian or are you going to be that dead Christian? That soul right next to you is on their way to hell. And they're waiting. They're waiting for a live person. They're waiting for that live person to talk to them about Lord Jesus Christ or give him tract. That's the least you could do. But you act like a dead fish. You're just sitting there. You're like a dead chicken. You know, your head's cut off and you're just sitting there. Right? You're like that dead snake. You know, your head is cut off. But, you know, you're kind of moving, but you're still dead. But so many Christians act like those animals right now. When with all this pandemic going on, with more variants you hear, when the world's going more crazier, faster than ever before, you have an opportunity to actually really stand up for Lord Jesus Christ in these last days. What is your purpose here living on earth, right? Again, I mentioned that over and over. The purpose is that so that we could preach the gospel to every creature out there. And in, when you get that opportunity, you have to take advantage. Don't play dead, right? You know, when bears attack, they say what? You know, play dead. Or I don't know if it works too well. But when... You have opportunity to preach the gospel. Many Christians play dead as if there's bears attacking you. There's scary animals attacking you. And you don't do anything. You play dead. You, you wish time passes by. You wish they don't look your way. You wish that Holy Spirit doesn't convict you anymore. But I'm sorry. Holy Spirit will always convict you when you're doing something wrong, when you're sinning. And it is up to you to listen to that conviction or just ignore it and deny it. What happens when you constantly ignore Holy Spirit's conviction, especially when you're sinning? You become dead. You just pretend to be dead Christian. That's why even though new spirit is living in you, there's no life in you, right? Like when verse 13 says, you know, you're manifested by the light. The light is shining, and light should be shining, but in your life, it's just full of darkness. You could make a lot of money. You could be a billionaire, millionaire, whatever it is. You could have a lot of friends. You could be famous. You could have all the power in the world. However, in the sight of God, you're just living in darkness. In the sight of many you know, Bible-believing Christians out there, you're just dark. Amen. Who, who loves darkness here? Don't raise your hand all at once, right? Who loves to be in dark room? Who loves to be in darkness? I mean, obviously, you have, you have a lot to you know, work out in your life if you really like darkness, right? So who loves to be in the light, right? Maybe because you don't have anything to hide. That's why you like the light. But if you have something to hide in your life, you love darkness. Why do you think, you know, teenagers always lock their doors? Because they have something to hide. They're not locking the door and studying 24-7, I tell you that. You know, they're not memorizing, you know, vocabulary, you know, studying history, you know, writing essays, you know, you know or talking to their friends about 
educational topics, right? No, they're doing something shady, fishy. You know, they're sinning. That's why they lock the door. And if your kid goes, Mom, I need my privacy, no, you don't. Until you, you, you leave this place, and you know, you don't need it unless you got something to hide, right? What's out there, right, that you do that you don't want your parents to see? If it's, if it's good, if it's not sin, right? Only reason, you know, people lock the doors, you know, many times, especially young people, is because you're sinning, because you don't want that light to shine on your room. You gotta close the curtains, right? You gotta dim the lights or without the lights and do your sin, whatever it may be. Why? Why? Because you're dead spiritually. You know, once, at some point, some Christians were alive. They're doing something for the Lord mightily. However, for whatever reason, especially when temptations come their way, when troubles come their way, Sufferings come their way, they start dying. They're dying, they're dying. And eventually they become dead Christians. And you, you don't do anything for the Lord. And that's the ultimate goal of the devil. For you, so-called Bible believers, to become a dead Christian. Maybe you only come here on Sundays and you listen to the word, you study the word, you have fellowship. However, outside of church, you're dead, right? There's no life in you. But that is not an exemplary Christian. That is not how a Christian should live. And going back to being a cowardly Christian, how do you know if someone's a cowardly Christian? Right? I mean, if you, you don't stand up for Lord Jesus Christ, you don't preach the gospel. And another thing is that people who do not stand up for King James Bible, they're cowards. They're dead. I mean, this perfect word of God, especially, you know, many of you, you know, seasoned people or older ones who came later, who did not grow up in a church, Bible-believing church. You found the truth through, you know, online ministry, you know, hearing, you know, Pastor Gene's, you know, preaching, Bible study. You came over. So you know how important the Bible issue is. You know how critical it is for a Christian to have the perfect word of God. But there are many, many, many so-called Christians do not stand up for King James Bible. They try to avoid the situation. You know, there's topic of Bible. It comes out and you're like, oh, please, please, you know, let's not talk about missing verses. Let's not talk about detail of Christ. Let's not talk about doctrine. You know, let's, let's just talk about you know, Jesus Christ. And that he saves you. Right? And then you want to avoid all these you know, Bible issues. Then you're a coward. Amen. Then right. you, you're a dead Christian. Why? Because you are that person who compromises with the world. And you're in a sinful life. Yes. And you don't want to carry a cross. That's why. You know, you, like your self is full of sin that when the truth shows up, you're trying to avoid that situation. You know, as a human being, many people don't want confrontation. And I'm not asking you to go out there and start arguing people, fighting with people, right? But those opportunities come to you. When it comes to you, what are you doing about it? Right? I mean, you're like, Lord, I want to do something for you. I, want to, I don't want to be a dead Christian. And the Lord gives you opportunity. And you don't do anything about it. Then what does that tell you? What does that tell the Lord about yourself? I mean, think about it. King James Bible, without it, we wouldn't be here. It's a perfect word of God. No matter what anybody says, it is the perfect word of God. Yes. I mean, it could be proven left and right, yes. right? Yes. By the lineage, you know, how it was written and all the doctrines are correct. 
you know, unless it's said otherwise, right? But for years and hundreds, I mean, years and years, right? No one has ever proven that King James Bible had a, has a mistake. If they do, they're liars. And they just use their own interpretation or just pick out a word, pick out a verse. They don't look at the whole context. How are you going to defend King James Bible? I mean, how? I mean, you study, of course. But if it is that dear to you, you're not going to be a coward anymore. And especially if you know someone who's using the wrong Bible, you're not going to stay you know, quiet anymore. Yeah. How could you, right, if you truly love them? It's like this. If someone's playing with fire, and they're your loved ones. Are you going to let them continue to play with fire? I mean, if you're a kid who doesn't know much, sees, you know, this water boiling, right? And then he goes, ah, oh, that looks so fun. Man, that water's bubbling. So I'm going to put my finger in there and see how it feels. If you're a mother or father, if you're, you know, anybody, family member, you're going to stop them. Hey, don't touch that thing. You're going you're gonna to get burned. You're going to get hurt. When all these folks are using NIV, NASV, you know, any other you know, corrupt Bibles out there, I mean, they're playing with fire. You're just watching them. I mean, honestly, I mean, do you, does your conscience feel good about it? Right? Like, oh. I mean, loved ones, right? If all of your friends and family, they're all using, you know, King James Bible, they, they believe it's perfect word of God, and you're a blessed person, right? You're in the right crowd. But however, all of us live with different types of people, and all of us acquaint with different types of people. And you may know some Christians who never heard of King James Bible, who never heard about Bible issue. I mean, I certainly didn't, you know? I, I was using NIV. I didn't even realize anything until someone showed me. Someone, someone has to show me. And someone has to show those people. And you're that person who could show it. Why? Because you are that person who believes in the King James Bible. You are that person who saved, you know, by trusting Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Because you're that person who wants to do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you're that person who doesn't want to stay dead. Christian all your life. Amen. Who'd you rather be with? Dead person or a live person? Alive. Right? Are you gonna marry a dead person? <laughs> I know if Lord tarries, I know some of you guys wanna get married, right? Especially young ones. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna go to the cemetery, pick out a cool name? It's okay, I wanna marry, you know, this person. I wanna marry that person. And of course it's a farce not going to happen. If you really, truly think like that, then you're crazy. You, know, you need to get your head checked. <laughs> However, as a Christian right now, so-called Bible believer, how are you defending the King James Bible? You know, as one of the sisters shouted out, are you actually studying? How much do you know about the history of King James Bible? How much do you know about what's wrong with other Bible? I mean, obviously, some of you are studying hard, you know, listening to, you know, our, you know, video sermons and Bible studies. Good for you, right? However, for many, you just don't know, right? You just come to church, you carry this Bible, and that's it. I mean, there are missing verses in other Bibles, right? Doctrine is wrong. You know, they deny Jesus Christ is God. And even they say you have to, you know, do work by salvation. All those things. How are you going to refute them if you don't study? And if you truly want to learn something, you have to study. And it shows, what does it show? That you're not willing to compromise. And you know, we need more man and woman who's not willing to compromise. When time gets tough, you shouldn't be that person who compromises, right? 
right? Okay. Uh, that person, you know what? If, if I talk to them about King James Bible, you know, my life will get harder. I'm just not going to do it, right? Whether it's your uncle, whether it's your aunt, whether it's your grandma, grandpa, whether it's your wife, husband, your children, your best friend, you have to talk to them about the Bible issue. And if they ever bring it up to you, it should be like, wow, you know, I've been waiting all this time. Yeah. Man, you know, I'm going to hold you to it because you're the one who wanted to talk about it. When those opportunities come, right, people who stand for Lord Jesus Christ, people who stand for truth, will not run away from it, won't be a cowardly Christian. So you look at your life. I mean, have you been a you know, cowardly Christian when it comes to the Word of God? And again, I tell you, you just have to see and you just have to understand how you deal with King James Bible and how you feel about King James Bible and how precious this King James Bible is to you. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. It should be an opportunity for you to reflect on your life right now as a Christian and see, man, have I been a cowardly Christian, especially when it comes to the perfect word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. Because so many, so many people, so many Christians know that King James Bible is the perfect word of God. But because of their own reasons, their own pleasure, because of you know, their love of money and whatnot, they deny it, refuse it to stand for it. Verse 17, Bible says, for we are not as many. So there are many, many people which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity. I mean, how sincere are you when it comes to King James Bible? How sincere are you when it comes to standing up for the King James Bible? You know, it's, it's good when we're street preaching and some, you know, liberal Christians come up and they start, you know, trying to correct you that what you're doing is wrong, right? You can't lead anybody to the Lord when they haven't led anyone to the Lord. And you talk to them about, you know, certain doctrines, and then you talk to them, you know, about, you know, 1 Timothy 3.16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, where other Bibles change it to, he was manifest in the flesh. And you tell them, okay, hey, you know, hey, what Bible do you use? I use NIV, you know. I mean, inside you're saying, oh, you know, that's, that's the idiot's version, right? Because it is. Because he makes, you know, Christians idiots. Why? Because... They're missing verses, deny deity of Jesus Christ, and they can't stand up for the truth anymore. Why? Because their they're, source is wrong. Right. And that's a perfect opportunity for you to stand up for the King James Bible. Start using some verses that you've learned in your Bible study classes. Right? And maybe they have chance to actually wake up and get right. You know, it's, I mean, when I learned about the King James Bible, I was shocked. I mean, I was literally shocked. I'm like, wow, man, there, I, I've been using devil's Bible all my life. Man, how, how foolish was I? I mean, obviously, you know, the church I was going to never taught the word of God. It was all, you know, worship. You know, praise and worship. I mean, all the time. I don't think I even opened the Bible in many of the services. We just carry it, you know, as a decoration. But once you start realizing and once you found out the perfect word of God, you know, it literally opened my eyes. It's like the light turned on. You know, I was walking in darkness. You know, I, mean, I was saved, right? by just trusting Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. But doctrinally, I was in total darkness. Man, there's no assurance of salvation. 
I don't know about deity of Christ, you know, dispensationalism, you know, heaven, hell, all those doctrines, right? Tribulation. Because why? I had the wrong Bible. And usually when people had the wrong Bible, what happens? They can teach the right doctrine. And many times they're compromising. Again, if the Bible clearly says, don't do it because it's a sin. And King James Bible is very clear in many of those subjects. But the other Bibles actually says it's okay, right? By twisting some words, you know, adding, subtracting. Yeah. Then you're like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab the other Bible. Why? Because I could actually justify my actions. And amazingly, you can. Because it's wrong. You know? It's like instead of being a command, right? Like study. It's a command. Study to show thyself approved unto God, where work meant that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you don't do it, it's a sin. You know, if you don't study the word of God, it's sin. Other version goes, just do your best. What is the definition of do your best for each person? Spending 60 seconds each day, 30 seconds, or maybe just pick out a day, you know, get a dart and just throw it. Okay, this month, you know, day number 12, I'm going to look at the Bible. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to look at it. Because at home, a lot of people don't open their Bible, right? <laughs> Many preachers, even, you know, Pastor Shrive and somebody, everybody will tell you that, you know, back in the day, people used to have TV guide. Everything is, you know, digital now, you know, virtual. And TV guide is, it looks like it's been opened a lot, right? I mean, it looks kind of worn out. Even the old ones. You know, this is, say, this is like 19, you know, 90. And 1988, it's, people are still looking at it. They're trying to reminisce. Oh, yeah, you know, two years ago, you know, this show, man, it was so fun. And you keep on at it. But when it comes to the Word of God, I mean, it's right next to the TV guy. There's a lot of dust on it. I mean, they're full of dust. Right? And then, you know, for you to actually see it, you have to kind of like blow the dust off. You, you might have to bring a tissue, right? And it's, it looks brand spanking new. I mean, it's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, your Bible shouldn't look new, you know. But people who use it a lot, you know, there's going to be, like, just like at school. When you look at some kid's textbook, it's new. I mean, that's why people go to bookstores, like college students. They buy these used books, but it's new. It's never been opened. I mean, literally, someone bought it, never used it, and sold it back to bookstore. Because they had no interest in it, or they might have dropped the class or whatnot. But Bible shouldn't be that drop class. Bible shouldn't be that you know, class that you don't care about. I mean, God's word will feed you, make you grow. Then you have to open it on a daily basis. Then let's go to how. How can you be a dead Christian? I'm sure you already know the answer. And let's just go over it. All you have to do is put your Bible down. Just leave it next to TV guy. You know, nowadays, I mean, people don't really read books or magazines, right? So just leave it, just leave where you leave it there. You know, whether it's in your closet, whether it's in your, you know, some bookcase somewhere you never open, just leave it there. Then you become spiritually dead. And you stop praying. You know, don't pray. You don't pray, you become a dead Christian. You know? I'm telling you how to become dead Christian. Obviously, I don't want you to become that Christian, right? But you're already doing it, so it becomes second nature to you. It's not like I have to force you to do it. And I'm like, stop praying, brother. Stop praying, sister. For many of you, you're like, I'm already doing it. I'm doing good. 
You know? I mean, if your heart says, you know, I'm doing good to become a dead Christian or as a dead Christian, wow, man, you, you backslid into the point. Like even the conviction of Holy Ghost isn't really helping you at all. So you put your Bible down, you stop praying, right? And you stop attending Bible-believing church where the Word of God is preached. Then you'll be spiritually dead. Yeah. So some of you, right? I don't know. You're almost at that point. You have put your Bible down. You stopped praying a long time ago. But you're barely alive. Why? Because, you know, you're coming to a Bible-believing church and listening to the Word of God where Bible is preached. And this is where you have to make a decision. You're hanging by the thread. You know? If you're not careful, right, you're going to stop coming here. No. Yeah. We're not like those churches out there where I'm going to beg you to come to our church because you need to feed my belly, you know. No, you know, it's your free will. Yes. You, if you love the word of God, for many of you, you're here because you love the word of God. Amen. You love the right doctrine, sound doctrine, and because you love the fellowship amongst brethren. That's why you're here. Not because, you know, some people, like, you know, pastors or leaders of church, you know, are so happy to see you at church and you feel important to be in church. That's not the reason you're here. Then you have a chance. Because what's going to happen? Because if you leave a Bible-believing church where the Word of God is preached, you're going to start hanging out with the wrong crowd. Yes. Because you are a being who wants to mingle, have fellowship with other people. True. Then if you don't come to a Bible-believing church, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to start hanging out with the wrong crowd. Yeah. yeah, you know, King James Bible, it is the best translation out there, right? But we don't have the original, you know. Oh, we don't have the original, right? right? And you have a bunch of crowd all the way over there, you know, doing that thing. You know what? You know, street preaching is outdated. You know, street preaching is outdated. We just do everything virtually, right? You know. And then you start hanging out with that crowd. And then you start becoming, oh, yeah, you know, woman pastors and ministers are okay. Oh. Yeah, you know, even the Bible says otherwise. You know what, you know, forget about what the Bible says, you know. Let's, let's just go with our tradition. And then you start picking and choose. Instead of sound doctrine, instead of listening to the preaching, right word of God, right doctrine, you stay away. And you start hanging out with the wrong crowd. At the end of the day, what's their mission? trying to imitate, trying to imitate the real truth. What are all these cults doing? They're trying to imitate the real truth yes, according to their own interpretation. Oh, there's going to be a paradise. There's no hell, all right? Think about it. If you're that type of person who goes, God is love, God is only love, Loving God will never send the soul to hell. Where Bible says, you know, God is just God, jealous God, fair God, Amen. right? And you deny all those. You know, you don't want to listen to any of those. You want to listen to that love, 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 love. And then what happens, right? You can't stay in a Bible-believing church. Because every time when a preacher is preaching about hell, you can't stand it, Right? And then that's when you make a decision. You know what? I'm going to go to where they imitate what I like. I mean, that's why many times, you know, we have many people come and go. I mean, in a Bible-believing church, you know, if we all we talked about was love, you know, charity, 
and more love, right? Just heaven and heaven and heaven. This place will be filled. I'll be guaranteeing you that. I mean, there'll be, and then all I'll be doing is smile, you know, on the pulpit. I'll be just smiling, you know. Brother, you're going to heaven. Amen. Sister, you're going to heaven. Amen. You know, amen, amen. You know, hey, the kid sitting there, you know, hey, you're going to heaven, right? You know, because there's, you know, hell's just an imagination, right? Hell's just, you know, the grave, right? That's where dead go, right? I mean, if we start compromising that way, what do you think is going to happen? Right. right? But you who's listening to the online and sitting here, you know the importance of the right sound biblical doctrine. Yeah. That's why you're here. That's why you want to stand up. And that's why you want to hang out with the Bible-believing crowd Amen. who have the same faith. Again, if you want to be a goner, you know, just love the world, imitate the world, you know, and live for yourself. I said, you become a dead Christian. Did you just hear what I said, right? Yeah. Live for yourself. You know, some of you are living for yourself, and that's it, right? Imitate the world, and it's going to be a quick highway, you know, you don't have to step on it too hard. Before you know it, you're going to be out there and become a dead Christian. Because at this point, you already, you know, you have put down the Bible. You stop praying. You know, you stop attending right Bible church. So, which shows that you're imitating the world and you live for yourself. Yeah. Then you are a dead Christian. And many times, dead Christians act like dead Christians. Why? Because they cannot see afar off. They only look at the present. You know, present time is so hard. Lord, I'm sorry, but you understand. Why, why should Lord understand your sin, right. right? Lord, you should understand. You know, I'm going through a hard time right now, so I have to sin. You know, what kind of excuse is that? I mean, have you ever, were you ever in that situation where you felt like, I have to sin to go on? Without contradicting the word of God. Be ye holy for I am holy. Yeah. No matter what the situation was, you know, Lord never sinned. Even though he went through every temptation you and I went through. So he's not going to compromise. So there's... No reason for you to justify your compromise, right? Then, don't compromise. The more you compromise, more dead you become. And the more insensitive you become to the truth. That's right. you know, what do your wives, men, and women as well, right, want to see? Sensitive person, right, who understands who empathizes with you, whatever the problems or situation or circumstances are. Then in order for you to do that, you have to be alive, right? You know, insensitivity is lost, a lot of times because you're dead. You know, you have no feelings, no care for that situation or whatever that issue is. When it comes to the Word of God, when it comes to doing something for Lord Jesus Christ, and as a believer, you should be alive. Amen. Things that you hear, things that you do, anything that related to the Lord Jesus Christ in the King James Bible, it should keep your blood pumping. It should keep you running. It should keep you think more and more about the thing, about the truth. It's cliche, you know, example, right? But when someone loves somebody, right, they always think about them. True. And then they always want to talk to them. Yeah. Right? I mean, when was the last time? Because I feel like some of you, and I know some of you had that kind of, you know, burning love for the Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible, King James Bible, right? If for some, probably never did. 
because you know, maybe you just didn't care at all. But if you're saved and you had that first love in the past, what has happened to you, right? You backslid into the point, right? You're so insensitive to the word of God, to the preaching, through the conviction of the Holy Ghost, and you become a dead Christian. Then how can you be alive again? Just think about a couple of things, right? You should always keep in mind the one who saved you. Think about that person who saved you. Always have him in your heart, have him in your mind. The Lord Jesus Christ who saved you from hell. If you have him in your mind all the time, then you got to be alive. How can a person who trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and constantly think about Lord Jesus Christ not be alive? I mean, the Lord himself is alive, right? He is risen. And if you trusted him as your Lord and Savior, he's living inside of you. And if you have a right relationship, personal relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, then you're not dead. You're truly alive. And think about what he saved you from. Then you'll be alive. So think about, keep in mind, one who saved you, Lord Jesus Christ, and what he saved you from. I mean, he saved you from death of hell. Yes. Think about it. Wow. I mean, you're like, wow. You know, it, it kind of sometimes makes you think into a like, deep trance, right? Man, there is a place called hell, and Lord save me from the eternal lake of fire. Wow. Man. You think about it over and over and over and over, And you're like, how can I compromise my life? How can I continue to sin and disappoint my Lord and Savior who saved me from that eternal lake of fire? I mean, can you imagine if you're burning in hell, even for a second, 10 seconds, years and years, thousand years, 10,000 years, million years, billions of years? And forever, but he saved you. And you're like, wow. You know what? Man, that sin A, forget it, man. I don't want to disappoint my Lord anymore. Sin B, man, you had enough, you know, stranglehold in my life. Forget it. Yes. I want to keep in my mind who saved me and what he saved me from. Amen. I want to live for him. Amen. I want to be something for him, yes. even if it's a tiny bit. Woo. And then he has given me instruction to how to make him happy. You know, you know, think about it. Sometimes the hardest thing for a kid or married couple is that you don't know what they love or how to make him happy in certain situations. They say no, but it means yes. They say yes, but it means no, right? And then you always go, oh, you should have told me, you should have told me, right? I thought you should know by now. You know, you've been with me for a while, right? But Lord doesn't play that I mean, Lord doesn't play like that, right? Yes. Lord has the clear answers here. Yes. He said, do it. You know, I, I mean, he's not like, you know, do your best. No, he said, just do this. Do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Then you make the Lord happy. You make you happy. And you become more alive and alive and alive. Man, don't you want to be that Christian? Yes, sir. Your life is worth the living, yes. and you're full of, you know, you're full of life. Instead of being dark, instead of being dead Christian, right? Oh, man. You know, you should be locked up for like a month in a solitary confinement and see how bad it is. But you're already in that, you know, spiritual solitary confinement. But you need to get out of it. I mean, see the light. Lord has given you light. Lord has manifested light in your life so that you could make correction. You could get right with the Lord. Yes. So you could confess your sins and get right with the Lord. Amen. You want to become that alive Christian instead of dead Christian. Oh. Let's pray. Dear Father, we go many days 
without even realizing how dead we are as a Christian. We put the Bible down, we stop praying, and going to Bible-believing church doesn't interest us anymore. And we start imitating the world, imitating the crowd, and we just live for ourselves, Lord. I pray that all of us will get right with you, Lord, and realize who saved us and what we are safe from. Lord, we're in the last days. I mean, we don't have too much time if you come back today, which we want you to come back as soon as possible. And we want to be found faithful and we want to be found alive, Lord, a live Christian doing something for you instead of being a dead Christian doing nothing for you because of what you've done for us. I pray that you'll be with everyone who's listening, whatever the issues of life they're going through. I pray that this will make them become a stronger Christian instead of getting farther away, becoming deader, Lord. I pray that we become alive for you, Lord, and realizing that you're alive and you're risen, and we serve a risen Savior. Bless the rest of the day, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone.